Hey guys, Z House here with another installment of my educational rant series. Uh, seems like this might be a bit of a regular thing where I kind of go over some industry side stuff and try to educate you, the players, and well, myself as well, on some of the things that go into the industry and why it is the way it is and why certain things work the way they do, and maybe, just maybe, how we can change it. So uh, today's episode is actually by popular request, uh, just from one guy making the request. Uh, today's episode is actually from my friend Alan, who had an idea for an episode that would deal with why do my magazines not feed? Uh, it's a very common question apparently uh, among certain groups and yeah, there's a lot of factors that go into magazine design and uh, Alan actually was discussing with me some of those things that affect it and you know, thank you to him for the idea. But he was talking to me about this. He's like, yeah, you know, I'd like to see you do a video on this because I don't think people realize how much goes into these magazines that feed these airsoft guns. So that's what I'm talking about today. So magazines for airsoft guns, just like everything else, deal with a wide variety of specifications for manufacturing and tolerances. Uh, you start off with the external tolerances. I mean, the placement of the locking tabs on an AK magazine or a G36 magazine, or the placement of the locking notch on an M4 magazine, just a couple millimeters up or down can determine whether or not that top tab that is in the feed tube actually gets disengaged enough to allow the BBs to spring up out into the hop-up chamber. Uh, the placement of the hop-up chamber of the uh, feed tube can determine whether or not that all works. There are so many factors externally just in the compatibility department that sometimes if manufacturers don't work with each other or don't all work with the same spec, you're going to run into issues. Uh, for example, my CYMA AK mid caps do not work or feed in my ENL AK without modification because the specifications for the locking tabs and the uh, placement of the feeding tube are just a little bit different. So my SEMA mid caps do not work in my ENL AK, whereas my ENL mid caps would not work in my SEMA AK because the ENL mid caps fit too loose in there and don't lock securely enough in order to actually fit and feed. Uh, and this is where we run into difference of specs and tolerances too. Some other people have probably had better luck. For me, I can't get them to work at all. So that's a big factor right there is the tolerances and the specs that everyone is working to. And sometimes those are so different even between the same companies that you're gonna run into issues there. Speaking of tolerances and specs, then we get into the internals where you have the actual feeding tube itself where it winds around for a mid cap. Uh, if that feeding tube winds too aggressively, or if it's not totally smooth on the inside, or if it's too wide and will allow BBs to jam up side by side, then there's another spot where you're going to run into problems of having just a little bit of an off-spec piece ruin the whole thing. And part of that is from molds. A lot of people don't realize this, but the molds for mid-cap airsoft magazines, they go bad and they get old. So as you have batches of magazines coming off of these molds for the plastic, those molds wear out. And if the molds aren't regularly inspected and regularly verified and the magazines coming off of them aren't regularly quality controlled to an exacting standard, then the magazines near the end of a mold service life are more than likely going to suck. In addition to that is also the follower. Now the follower is another huge piece that can contribute to whether or not your magazines feed. Uh, some magazines will have followers that have a little hinge on them. I know the Hex Mag Airsoft magazines and the PTS EPMs both use a hinge type follower. Some use a solid plastic follower. Uh, whether or not that follower is prone to getting jammed in the design, the degree, or the quality of that feeding tube is also going to determine whether or not you have a good quality magazine that feeds regularly. So the molds for those will get old sometimes too, and if those are out of spec for any reason, then they can lock up and jam up on you. And then of course, in addition to the follower and the channel, you also have the spring. Uh, the spring for most airsoft magazines 
is a huge, 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 huge issue. Uh, what, and it can make or break whether or not a magazine works well. Uh, some springs are going to be more prone to seizing up than others. Some springs are going to retain their elasticity over use better than others. Uh, some springs are tougher, tighter, or uh, looser than others. So you need that right balance of having a spring that's strong enough to push all the BBs out, weak enough to be compressed enough to hold the magazine's capacity, and that also is not going to seize on itself as it winds through a channel. Uh, now, a lot of these springs may or may not be made in-house. Some of them might be outsourced to a supplier. And whether or not you're doing the quality control on the springs, whether they're made in-house or outsourced, is also going to determine how these things are going to function. So I'm gonna put up on screen here a complete shot of a disassembled M4 mid-capacity magazine. Now this is pretty typical of most M4 mid-caps, how you're gonna see them, at least the ones you can disassemble. Uh, some of them have the channels molded in and they're actually part of the magazine and they're two halves clamshelled and you know glued together. Can't really disassemble those to the same degree to demonstrate for effect, so this is a GMP high RPS mid-cap. I had one laying around to disassemble. But looking at that disassembled magazine, you can see how many moving parts are actually inside there. And if any of those are out of spec or if any of those are the wrong spec for the gun they're trying to feed, all of those can change things. Or if any of them are the wrong spec for the BBs. I went over in a previous video how I was having trouble with Valken BBs in a couple of my magazines. Uh, that was actually in the video with the BB Warrior. So when you look at all those parts inside a magazine and realize all the specs that have to be rock solid and dead on and all the parts that have to be made correctly and all the parts that have to fit correctly with the gun you're putting them into, then it becomes a little more clear how much can go wrong with these magazines and why yours might not be working. So how can we remedy or prevent the problem of magazines that do not work? Uh, number one, my biggest recommendation, buy good magazines. Uh, most magazines will have some kind of reputation on the market and they will earn that reputation through whether or not they feed and whether or not they're good. Uh, pay attention to the batches that you're getting because certain reviews that came out a few years ago about a certain magazine might not be relevant anymore if that company has let their molds go. I know mag midcaps are notorious for having bad batches or were because, again, who knows right now? Uh, King Arms midcaps had some bad batches back in the day and who knows right now so you gotta do some research and try out as many magazines as possible before you make a commitment to buying a bunch. But buying reputable magazines also goes into some of the work that the industry does on the back end to make sure that their magazines work. Uh, gun manufacturers, at least, will typically make sure that their brand of magazine works with their brand of gun and any magazines that work with that particular type of gun should also mean that the magazines from that manufacturer work with those other types of guns. It depends, you know, you might have to do some uh, digging and some work on your end to confirm all that. But for example, GNP makes M4 midcaps, GNP makes M4 AEGs. You can generally assume that GNP M4 midcaps are going to fit, feed, and function really well in GNP M4 AEGs. So by logic, that means that those are made to the same spec as the GMP M4 AEG Magwell and other magazines compatible with that Magwell spec should also have the guns from those companies fit the GMP M4 midcaps. Then another thing that the industry does on their end that I've heard of is uh, PTS is one of the big companies I hear does this a lot. They will actually send their magazines out to other gun manufacturers and they will see if they fit, feed, and function. And they will get a wide variety of airsoft guns to make sure that their magazines are as widely compatible as possible. Uh, that's why I like the EPM so much. They tend to fit and feed in pretty much everything I use because they've been tested in such a wide variety of systems and they send out samples to so many companies who can obviously confirm whether or not they work and see if PTS needs to make any adjustments. That might be part of why PTS magazines are so expensive because of all that work they do on the back end. And as a user, another thing that you can do, uh, enough about the industry, another thing you can do as a user with your magazines is you can try lubing them, you can try loading and unloading them a bunch and seeing if they break in, you can try different BBs, try them at different guns, see if they like certain things better than others, or if your magazines work fine, don't do anything. Uh, don't open them up, don't mess with them, just leave them be, don't let the magic out.
So I guess my conclusion to this video is I hope that as you know a player you've learned something about how these magazines can be so weirdly off spec or out of spec or manufactured incorrectly or all the things that can go wrong and I hope that maybe you've thought of some solutions and from the industry side I hope that you guys are paying attention to what some of your competition is doing and I hope you realize that the better you can pay attention to those molds, the better you can make all those parts, and the more that you can communicate with other manufacturers to make sure your stuff is as compatible as possible, you're gonna get more sales from that. So, I don't know, take that for what you will. That's just my opinion and those are my thoughts. And this is E-House from Gun Gamers, signing off.